Hey friends, it's Scott Curcio, and today we are recapping the 2023 housing market in Chicago. We're also gonna be diving into the luxury market and uh, our friends in the suburbs. That's gonna be a little bit of a departure for me. If you've been following me for a while, you know I usually do a couple different videos today, all in one. So look on the screen below for uh, when we're gonna hit luxury and then when we're gonna hit the suburbs. There you go. You can fast forward if you like, although I hope you don't. I hope you'll watch the whole thing um, because it was overall a really good year for housing. The one thing I want you to remember, and if you've been following me for a while, you know I talked about this a lot last year, is that we had a lot less homes for sale. We had an inventory problem, right? Not enough houses to meet the demand that we had. So naturally, we're gonna see fewer homes that sold this year. So let's dive in right into those numbers. We had just over 26,000 home sales in Chicago, in the city limits, in 2023. Now that was down 20.6% 20 from 2022. However, if you watch these for a little while, and by the way, I'll interrupt this, Matt, is to ask you to like, comment, and share, and uh, keep following because I really try and make all of this information, boil it down to really manageable, useful terms, uh, and not go too far. I always love feedback too, so feel free to send me a message. Anyway, back to this, 20.6% less than last year. But remember, mid-year of 2023, I was saying how we were down 30%. The market really, really clawed back, especially in the fourth quarter. And I think that's a testament to how the tide shifted with how people were feeling about housing. Of course, we had interest rates start to come down, right? In January 2024, our rates are about a point less than where they were two and a half, three months ago. That really led to a lot more optimism, a lot more hope. Starting off the year in 24, people are excited. They seem to be focused on, I'm gonna make a move. Not as anxious or nervous or scared as they were at the start of 2023. So ultimately, fast forward a year when I'm recapping this next January in 2025 and telling you about this year, I think we're gonna see our numbers get a little bit better. Time will tell and I hope you follow along to see if I'm right. Anyway, uh, we the sales last year were the lowest number of sales we've seen in the city uh, in over a decade since 2012. Let's break it down by category. Condos and townhomes are up first. We had just under 14,000 of those to sell this year. Average market time of 66 days, which is a little bit better than last year. Um, and our average sales price actually went up, not by much, a little over a percentage point, but it was the third straight year that we saw that number go up. It was the highest average sales price we've ever had at just over 446,000. And it was the sixth straight year that we saw that over 400. So overall, really good year. If we look back at 10 years of condos and townhome performance in the city, we gained just under 34% in value. Um, our units were down uh, last year, 23%. Um, and it was also the lowest number of sales that we've seen since uh, 2012. By the way, always got my handy clipboard. So every time you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Because I can't recall this all, right? I gotta make sure I get it right for you guys. So um, lastly with that, if you followed me for a while, you know that I always talk about that month supply of inventory. And for condos, we ended the year at 2.7 months, very healthily a uh, seller's market. Remember, if it's under five months supply, uh, every as it gets lower and lower, it's better and better for sellers. And then as you get north of five, it becomes more of a buyer's market. And as those numbers get higher, it's better for buyers. So there's our friends with the condos. Let's turn it to the single family homes. We're just gonna throw that to the side there. Uh, we had. Almost 9,000 single family homes sell last year in an average market time of 68 days. Uh, and our average sales price um, was down a little over 6%. So we lost a little bit there. Uh, and we saw our units down uh, just over 16%. It was the lowest number of sales for single family since 2011 deep in the throes of the recession. Uh, and we ended the year with a month supply at 3.1. Not as good as last year. Last year we were 2.8, the year before that we were 2.4. So things cooling a little bit market-wide on, uh, on single family homes. We have seen though a gain of 52% in the last decade in those values. So still not performing poorly. Also a little note on that as well, remember that we have seen such a segmented market. So if you're sitting at home watching going, gosh, well, Scott, I have a single family home in Portage Park. How is my house doing? It's gonna be different than Irving Park or Avondale or Hedgewish or you know Rogers Park. They're all those little segments based upon the type of house you have, the price points you're in and where you are are gonna be different. So you feel free to send me a note and say, Scott, I have a property like this. What's my sub market doing? And I will happily give you those data points because they're all gonna vary a little bit. I anticipate we're gonna see that bifurcation continue in 2024. And yes, I did, did just use the word bifurcation. 
apparently I like to be pretending that I'm smart. Uh, all right, let's move on to our two to four units. Now, again, we're going to just throw that to the side. Uh, um, oh, and I just, by the way, threw a page that I needed. We're going to pause for a sec. Sorry, you guys. I got so excited. We're going to leave this in the video too. Uh, it's so excited about that. Two to four units, which you know for a while has been really a strongly performing segment. We were only up 1.69% um, in our average sales price this year, but it was the third straight year over 400,000 and it still was our highest sales price ever. The big news for two to four unit properties is the gain we've had in the last 10 years. Get ready, 125% increase in value. That's just ridiculous to me. Um, last year, we did see fewer units sell, just under 20%. We had over 3,400 of these properties trade last year in an average market time of 82 days. Um, it was our lowest number of sales since 2008. It's so going even further back than the condos and the single families. And we ended the year at a 4.3 month supply, uh, which is pretty much where we've been the other two Decembers, 2022, 2021. So real consistent right there. Now, that's what's going on in the city, it's time to jump to the suburbs. Most suburbs, like the city, saw fewer home sales. We did see a lot of appreciation still, some depreciation. Here's some of the highlights from where I stand. We had an increase in sales in two key communities. Lamont was up just under, or just over 2%, and Oakbrook was up over 11%. Again, these are the number of home sales. Um, we also saw those some communities that had a substantial decrease, and I'm gonna go from most to least. Uh, Inverness was down 45%, Flossmoor down 41%, Hinsdale down 40%, Wheaton was down 36%, percent and Highland Park down 35 percent. Now I've gone through the majority of the suburbs here but it's not all of them so if you're seeing this and going well wait a minute I live in Hinsdale and what else happened there you just shoot me a note like I've asked you guys to do before in this video and I'll send you some details there. This is not doom and gloom this is going to be up and down but some things of note. We also saw an increase in the average sales price in three key communities. Lamont was up 42 percent I almost couldn't say it. Oakbrook was up 20, almost 25%, and Mundelein up 14%. We did see a decrease in Winnetka, but don't feel bad for them because we have some really good news coming when we get to the luxury portion in just a second. Uh, Winnetka saw their average sales price fall by uh, just over 37%. Um, again, we're talking singular year data points here. Does that mean that, oh my God, everything's falling to crap in some of the places that had the decreases? No. In a lot of ways, some of these people may have had, uh, some of these communities have fewer sales because people moved into them in 2020 and 2021 and 2022. So a lot of their runway might have already been used up, so to speak. So that's our little quick trip to the suburbs. Now to the luxury market. Of course, that's homes priced at a million or higher. We're gonna give you guys some real quick stats to start. First of all, and this is by the way, these numbers to start are in the city. So our million plus single families, we had 739 of those to trade in calendar 2023. That was our third highest year ever, although it was down 25% from 2022. Um, and uh, Chicago in general, single families were down 16. So a little bit worse performance there for luxury homes as opposed to the general market. Now let's look at our condos. Now keep in mind with our condos, we didn't have a big sellout of a big new construction project in 2023, the same that we had seen the last few years. So these numbers, we were still our third highest ever for the number of million plus condo sales at 765. That was down about 11 and a half percent from last year, but remember, for Chicago in whole, we were down much better than the condos in, in luxury. Regular condos, all condos were down 23%, only half of that for uh, luxury. So they did pretty well, right? Now let's talk about our favorite topic, the most expensive home sales. So Chicago was six of the top 10 sales in 2023, but they weren't the two highest, or the, I should say the highest. Highest belonged to two single family homes in Winnetka. You had 691 Sheridan at 12 and a half million, and then 445 Sheridan at 12 and uh, 12 million, uh, 250,000. Both massive lakefront estates with private beaches, uh, real gorgeous properties. I could sit here and swoon on them all day long, but I think I'll bring that on in another video talking about about some of those uh, some of those units. What was real noticeable this year is Naperville found its way onto that top 10 list. There was a house on Van Buren uh, that was any, unlike anything we've ever seen, the highest sales price ever there uh, at just over $8 million. Uh, and so they got onto the list for the first time. Lake Forest was the other suburban community to have one of the top 10 sales in the, uh, in the area last year. And that was 1421 Lake, um, their seventh highest sale that they've ever seen in Lake Forest. I'm gonna keep 
dropping my pages like I've done today. It feels really fun. I feel like a crazy professor, you guys. Uh, our most expensive single family in Chicago was 1956 Orchard. That was $10,650,000. This was set on three city lots, impeccable grounds, an 11,000 square foot uh, uh, house, um, the seventh highest priced home sale that we've ever seen publicly listed in the MLS in Chicago. Our most expensive condo downtown was, and I always love this, generally when we see these really big numbers on condos, it's raw space. It happens a lot. It happened again this year. It was the penthouse at 800 North Michigan, um, 8,000 square foot of raw space with over 500 square foot of outdoor space, $11.2 million. Uh, that also came with three parking spaces. And um, I'm going to do a video, I think, in the near term that shows kind of all the different categories. If you've uh, ever gotten my luxury home market report every year, I break it down by the top 10 uh, condo sales in the city, the top 10 um, single family sales in the city, and then the top 10 suburban sales too. So you guys see a nice wide mix of everything out there. So if you like a copy of that report, you know what to do. You can like, you can comment, you can share, you can send me a direct message, you can send a carrier pigeon if that's even still a thing. You can text me, all the things, and I'll make sure that gets you a copy of that report. Um, so obviously down a little bit across the board, I'm gonna wrap up now for you guys down a little bit in our numbers, down in some of our pricings, but overall not a bad year. I think there was a lot of doom and gloom in the housing reporting in the media last year. And there were plenty of people that said, you know what, I still have to move or I still want to move. And they did that. I think a year from now when we've had uh, time to reflect on 2024, the year that we've now started, I think we're going to see uh, housing on a little bit more solid footing. The real question of course will be, will we see recession this year? And everybody is, is trying to pontificate on that and figure it out. Time will tell, and I look forward to bringing you guys so many more uh, stories and data points and reports this year. If there's something you want to see, get in touch. Let me know what topics would be of interest to you, and uh, hopefully I can bring you something that you'll enjoy even more than what you're hopefully enjoying right here. Have a great 2024. We'll see you soon.